Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Isaiah 55 Verse 1 Ho! Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he that has no money, come, buy, and eat, yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Let no one ask whether he may come to Christ for salvation, he is bid to come. Whoever wills to come is welcome. Ho! Oh, says God, as men cry when they have goods to sell and would attract the passerby. And not merely to one does he speak, but to everyone, ho! Oh, everyone who thirsts, whatever is the age he lives in and to whatever age he may, himself, have attained ho! Oh, everyone who thirsts. But is there anything to be heard by those who come? There is in God exactly that which every soul needs. First, waters for the thirsty. There is even more than absolute necessities, wine and milk, God has an abundance of grace, yes, a superabundance. He can give us all we need and even more than we desire. Oh, turn not away when God the Father cries, ho. Oh. Two. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not? Listen diligently to me and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Apart from God, there is nothing for us but destruction. We may spend our money and our labor, too, but happiness is not to be found by the creature apart from the Creator or by a sinner apart from the Saviour. God has so constituted the human mind that it cannot be perfect without him. 3. Incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. It seems a very little thing to do, does it not? Simply to hear, to incline the ear, yet that is the way of salvation. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Alas, nowadays the mass of men will not hear God's message of mercy, they pass it by as if it were an old worn out tale of which they knew quite enough. Hear, then, what God says to his poor forgetful creature, hear, and your soul shall live. 3. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David. Will God make a covenant with man? Can it be that he will strike hands with sinful man and enter into league and compact with him? Yes, so he says. If men will but incline their ear and come to him, he will enter into covenant with them. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. But David is dead, says someone. Yes, I know he is, but the David, here meant, always lives, it is Jesus, the Son of God. 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Jesus Christ is the people's witness and leader. Born among them, living among them, dying for them, living still to save them, and God declares that he gives this Christ to such as hear him, to such as incline their ear and come unto him. 5. Behold, you shall call a nation that you know not and nations that knew you not shall run unto you because of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ did not die in vain. He died to redeem his chosen people and those whom he redeemed, he will certainly have. Even though some reject him, others will not. God has power over human hearts and where Christ's gospel is faithfully preached and attended by the Holy Spirit's power, sinners must come to Christ. 
their will shall sweetly yield to the supremacy of love. Even though they set themselves against Christ, yet they shall come when the Lord draws them. And glory shall be gotten for his holy name by the salvation of those who never even thought of being saved. 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near seek the Lord while he may be found. That is, now. Call upon him while he is near. He is near now. Wherever Christ is lifted up and his gospel is proclaimed, there he is according to his promise, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. What a grand word that is. He will abundantly pardon. However abundant sin may be, God's pardon is still more abundant. As Paul puts it, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Sin may be like the great mountains, but the mercy of God is like Noah's flood that rose above the tops of the highest hills. He will abundantly pardon. 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Oh, what a mercy it is to be taught to think God's thoughts and to be led in God's ways. It is the entrance into a new life. It is something infinitely beyond the greatest elevation to which any ordinary life can ever reach by its own unaided power. 9.12 for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not there, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth good and bad, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it for you shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. For you, that is, you who have heard God's word and believed it, you shall go out with joy. Happy hearts help to make a happy world. He who has found his Saviour, received God's pardon and learned God's thoughts, shall find the whole world full of music to him, wherever he may be. 13. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off wherever God's grace begins to work, it cuts up thorns and thistles, and plants in place of them fir trees and myrtle trees. Oh, that his grace might renew each one of us! And, then, when that blessed work has been done, May we never cease to glorify that dear name by the power of which we have been changed.